All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be doing a first look on the Adidas Metal Bone. This is a paddle that actually grabbed quite a bit of attention and it's probably for two reasons. One, it's Adidas and I think people are generally curious what they did because they've kind of been a laughing stock in the pickleball community. And then two, it actually does have a very cool concept where it has replaceable bolts in the throat of the paddle. This is not something any company has been able to do in the past, so I think the concept of it's very cool. Instead of using lead tape, you can just screw in these bolts and not have to deal with toxic lead tape or having to throw it out if you put it in the wrong spot and then put it in another spot, you can just screw in the bolts. However, I do have some thoughts on the bolts, which is the first thing we're gonna talk about. And that is, they just don't do that much because of the location they chose to put the bolts. If you guys know anything about lead tape location, the bottom of the throat is probably the least effective place you could put lead tape. Because in this area, it's not shifting the balance very much, it's not shifting the swing weight very much, and it's also not increasing the twist weight very much because it's so low on the throat. Usually the most optimal or most effective places if you're looking for a big change in a paddle is about the bottom corners is the lowest you can go and still get a good impact on the paddle. And then the more you go up the sides to like three and nine, you're gonna start impacting swing weight. You're also gonna start impacting the twist weight of the paddle. You start getting more bang for your buck the higher up you go with a certain limit. You know, once you get to the head, there is now it's just head heavy. But unfortunately with the bolts, they're just in a bad spot. So I ran a bunch of numbers on these. The balance effectively changes none, or at least not a noticeable amount. And same thing with swing weight. I tried every single bolt configuration in my swing weight machine and stock with no bolts, it's 116, which is a pretty good number. And then with all four bolts in the highest position, it only goes up to 117. So the swing weight changes are not noticeable. Twist weight, no bolts, it goes from 5.6 up to 5.8 with all four bolts. And if you guys know anything about twist weight, five is not a great number. Now, once you start getting six and up, it's decent, but around 6.5 is usually a pretty good sweet spot, which we'll talk more about that on this paddle because it is a bit subpar, but the bolts didn't change the twist weight much. So twist weight, swing weight, and balance all barely change with the bolt location. Essentially, all you are adjusting is the static weight in this location. And mine stock with no bolts weighs about 8.4 ounces. With all four bolts, it goes up to about 8.7 ounces. So I think had Adidas just moved the bolts up more, you know, maybe above the bottom corner or just giving you more slots around the paddle, I think this could have been a home run. And I asked them about this and they did say it's something they're going to look to do in the future but it wasn't something they were able to do on this first iteration. So overall, the concepts of the Bolt, very cool, but I don't think it was executed very well. The other thing that's maybe just a minor annoyance, but I also understand why they had to do it, was you have this little tool to screw in and unscrew the bolts. It's essentially just an Allen wrench. The problem I have with this is, let's say you lose the tool. Okay, you can probably just use a regular Allen wrench at home, but if you're at a tournament and you don't have that and you wanted to change the Bolt location, you're kind of stuck. I don't know if there's a better way that they could have made these removable and still screwed in tight. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing. It's just like eh, one more thing to keep track. Of. Okay, so if the bolts didn't really change anything, which is a pretty big disappointment, how's the actual paddle performance? Because this thing costs $260, so it better be really good. And unfortunately, it's just not that good of a paddle. I did an entire day of a play session with this and it was hard to even get through the whole play session using the metal bone. In fact, I might have got maybe six games through the metal bone before I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I picked up my gearbox just to have a frame of reference. And it was like, it just felt like a huge upgrade in terms of playability. Everything about it was better. Power was better. Resets were better. Sweet spot was better. Spin was better. And I think that would apply with most top tier paddles on the market compared to the metal bone. The biggest problem I have with the metal bone is that it's very tinny, it has a lot of vibrations, and it kind of feels like no max a little bit. It's also very loud. Yeah. 
and they're actually using a PMI foam core. And this is something that people were pretty excited about because they're like, whoa, wait, an entirely foam core, how does that even work? Is that even legal? Okay, I don't personally know that much about PMI foam. I'm not an engineer, but what I can tell you from a player standpoint is that it does not feel like the foam that you guys are expecting, which would be EVA foam. This is very stiff, it's very hard, and if you've hit an Omex paddle, that's pretty much what you can imagine here. It doesn't have a pleasant feel and it's very loud, which is part of the reason we ended up on polymer is that it felt better and it sounded better. This kind of feels like we went backwards to what some of those older paddles were because it, I don't know, everyone I gave the paddle to was pretty much immediately like, oh, like, I don't like that. Now, what I will say is it's not 100% garbage. However, if you factor in the price and how much you will spend on the paddle, I would say it's really, really, really bad. If it was maybe $150, I would be a little bit more understanding, but I think once you pass that $200, $250 threshold, with all of the options you have on the market right now, your paddle better be really unique, have a great selling point, and have incredible performance. And I just don't think the Metal Bones has that. As I was playing with this paddle and I tried to think, who is this paddle for? There was no one that really came to mind. Or even if I could think of someone, there are other paddles that are cheaper and do the job better because the Metal Bones has a poor sweet spot, which you can see backed up by the data of the twist weight, 5.6 or 5.8 if you have all the bolts in. By today's standards, that's pretty subpar. And then spin, also very subpar. I felt like I had to hit the ball very flat on my drives. Thirds, it was hard to get a lot of spin. And when I went back to the gearbox, that was actually the biggest thing I noticed was holy crap, I can actually put spin on the ball again. So I think Adidas needs to rework whatever their spin blade technology is because in my opinion, it's clear it doesn't work. You have all of these other paddles on the market that either use a raw carbon fiber face or even Selkirk with paint grit gets a lot more spin. So whatever they're doing, I think it needs to just be reworked. So yeah, the spin is just not good on it, which I think at $260 is completely unacceptable. And even just in the year 2023, that's not a good look when most paddles are easily over the 1700 or maybe even 1800 RPM benchmark. I do wonder when these paddles are being tested, who's testing them? Because I feel like if you gave it to most pickleball players, especially ones that are familiar with paddles, I think it would be pretty obvious in the feedback that this is not what you should release. I feel like it's a step backwards in terms of feel and the spin's not good. And if you're gonna do release this and then also charge $260, it's just a really bad look. I understand the concept of the bolts and the R&D behind that was probably quite a bit. So I'm not saying it should be cheap, but the performance that the paddle has makes me think of cheaper paddles. So yeah. I think for the price, this paddle sucks. It's not something I would recommend to anyone. I think a 6-0 double black diamond, a Vatic, a Neonic, basically any paddle that you have heard about recently and has gotten even a remotely good review would be better than this. There's not a lot of paddles. In fact, I don't know what I would say the metal bone is better than. And I hate to roast the paddle this hard because I do genuinely applaud Adidas for trying something new. There's a lot of copycat brands out there that aren't adding anything to the market except going to the factory, asking for a catalog paddle. I have a lot less respect for those than I do this Adidas. While this one may have flopped, I'm sure they're going to reiterate on this and make it better in the future. And I've even talked to the team at Adidas. I can tell they care about pickleball, but they still haven't quite found what works yet for the masses. And I don't know if they just need better testers to test the paddles and give them feedback or what it is, but it's pretty clear that this one missed the mark. And I think most people who hit it would agree with that statement. At best, I would call this an all court paddle. It doesn't have great control because the sweet spot's poor and the spin is bad, which are two things that I think are important for controlling the ball. And then in terms of power, 
I mean, you can hit the ball reasonably hard, but it's not any harder than some of the Thermoform paddles, certainly not harder than the new Gearbox or even Annalie Waters' new paddle. So it's just in an awkward spot of like, maybe if it had a horrible feel, but it had insane power, you could put up with it. But it doesn't have a good feel and it doesn't have great power or, you know, a bad feel and amazing control. It just, there's no set feature of it that really stands out. So I don't know who I would recommend this paddle to. I think if you get the chance to try it, you should try it and let me know what you think of it. But overall, there's no one that I am able to recommend the Adidas Metal Bone to. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.